Hello, Georgetown. I'm Beverly Enos, and you're watching Spotlight Georgetown. You can find us Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Middle of the night, you can probably find us again. Um, quite often, they rerun shows. If there's a show you would like to see again, please let Janet here at the studio know. If you would like to be on the camera with me, please let me know. This is your cable station. It's your station. It's the town station. So if you would like to be part of it, come on down. We'll teach you how to use the equipment and the cameras and the computers and all of that kind of thing. So a fun place to be. Now today we're going to be talking to Andrea De Giovanni, That's and we're going to be talking about solar development. That's correct. Now you're a solar developer for Revolution. Revolution. Is okay. Yeah, it's one of the uh, local Massachusetts companies. So uh, what's good about that is that, you know, we have a physical office in Burlington, Massachusetts, right near the Burlington Mall. And it, um, you know, it, it's, it's been born out of a um, commercial and residential electrical contracting company. So uh, that's been there for um, close to 20 years now. So basically, uh, it, it employs people, um, even from Georgetown, some local electricians, people who work now locally. You just told me a minute ago that you're from the Czech Republic. Yes, I am. Originally. Now, where do you live? I live on Pond Street in Georgetown. Really? I yes, used to I live do. on Pond Street. Have you? Nice, nice street to live on in Georgetown. It is. Now, I saw you at the Pearly School mm -hmm. at the Holiday Fair. Mm -hmm. You, would, you would, had a booth there to show everybody. Basically, we have power from oil, we have power from gas, we have power from nuclear, we have wind power, and we have solar power. Mm -hmm. And those are about our only choices. There's some hydropower as well. Okay. If you see, if you look at your electric bill, um, we do get a little credit, which is always nice to see as something in a negative um, for using hydropower. So that's one of the, the example of <coughs> a renewable source that over time creates um, basically a uh, cash positive situation for mm -hmm. whoever owns it. Yeah, we do get some of our electricity from Canada, mm -hmm. so that um, comes down. How many solar electric systems are in Georgetown? <clears throat> Currently, I'm aware of five um, quite new solar electric systems I installed between 2011 and 2013. Um, there is this new incentive movement um, that we're experiencing now um, since 2010, we've had uh, access to uh, lots and lots of support f on the federal level as well as the Massachusetts level. Um, we have, um, um, you know, a lot of people may be, um, may be aware of the 30% federal tax credit that you can get back f uh, through filing your income taxes uh, for uh, installing uh, some sort of a renewable um, system such as wind or solar or even geothermal but a lot of people are not aware of the amazing programs in Massachusetts that are even greater than that okay so if we have five of these of these five are they for the whole house or is it, is it they have a couple of panels for the jacuzzi outside no, these systems um, uh, partially, if not uh, offset the, the usage. Um, uh, basically, uh, when you design a system for a home, like I do, this is what I do. I'm a solar developer, and I, I try to design the right system for a home. And we look quite closely at the usage um, of a family, uh, whoever lives in the home. So we study their electric bill, and what we try to do is uh, look at the whole year's worth of consumption and then create a system that would create the same amount. Okay. Can you explain to me, I've always wondered, the solar panels that you usually put on a roof, how does that solar energy turn into electricity to turn on my lamp? Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> I li that. That's actually my favorite part about solar electricity. Um, to, you know, the, the concept that we have the sun shining on the panels on the roof. And if, if the, the roof is a very um, sort of sunny roof, if it's uh, southern orientation, um, and if there's not too much shade, then those panels are receiving the light from the sun. And through the photoelectric effect that dates back to Albert Einstein, and he won his um, Nobel Prize uh, in 1921, 
um, for, um, f for thinking up the photoelectric effect. Um, you know, that's sort of where this idea came from. Um, of course, now in 2013, we have come a long way mm -hmm. to create panels that can um, take the light from the sun and uh, at a 21% efficiency, turn it into power that we can use in, in our homes. Mm -hmm. And the way that happens is basically um, there is a, a crystalline material inside the panels. And, you know, as you can imagine, crystals can um, collect um, okay. light. Mm -hmm. And then um, through wiring, um, it is um, basically uh, created into a direct current right there in that panel. Can it be stored? Yes. Okay. Yes, it can. Yes, so it can. the sun doesn't have to be out to have the solar panels work. Yes. However, um, so, you know, the technology has been around for a while, and there are many solar systems already operating for the last three decades. So, uh, so uh, and th these systems have mostly been used in remote areas where, where the, um, the grid is just not, you can't tie into the grid. So, um, th in those remote areas, people have used batteries to store the electricity uh, the direct current, um, and then sometimes they even have appliances that run on direct current. Um, okay. Most of our homes, uh, actually all of the United States, run, uh, runs on alternating current. So, so what happens um, uh, here, what we use here in the United States, is um, we need to convert the direct current into okay. alternating current, and we do that with a, with a piece of equipment called an inverter. So it's, it's no big deal, and we just convert it in, in the house. Is this the same type of power that um, a lot of the signs on the highway now, you'll see a big rod with a, a solar on the top? Sure, sure. And so those are all by solar power? Sure, they are. The, the, the variety of um, uh, uses of, of solar panels. Um, actually, in, if, if you have been to New Jersey City, uh, right across the river from uh, New York City, you see um, every single uh, electric pole on the street has this one panel uh, mounted on, on every single... So the, the street lights are free, basically. Well, uh, basically what it does, um, it, it localizes power generation. You know, the power is needed in that neighborhood. And since you have these, these poles already there, and it doesn't you know, harm anybody to, to stick a panel up there. Nobody even notices after a while. Uh, basically, you're creating power uh, that can be used immediately in, in the vicinity. The one thing that most people, and I didn't know either um, before I got into the field of solar electricity, um, the one really disappointing thing about electricity um, is the fact that first we generate it in, in such an unhealthy way. You know, we have these coal-fired generating plants that are, that are just polluting our environment, and we have the nuclear plants, and they're, you know, very harmful. I don't have to go on on, on that. But, but, but the disappointing part is that they're so far away, and then we need to import that power. And while that power um, travels from pole to pole for miles and miles, we actually lose so much of it. Okay. And that's the disappointing part, that first we pollute our environment and then we waste what we have um, been creating. Um, and so the nice thing about solar power is that it localizes the generation. You know, when a solar panel is on your roof and you are using the power that was created on your roof, the, the, tr the power didn't have to travel, and therefore you, you're not stronger. only... Uh, yeah, <coughs> you're being very efficient with what... Uh, now, in doing. Georgetown, are there any regulations or restrictions for solar power? Yes. So, um, during the last three years, as you know, I've been um, not only a solar um, system owner, but, but also a solar developer looking for people to um, sign up for solar. I've heard a lot of um, 
misconception. They, they think that solar is not possible in Georgetown. And so um, I'm glad to be here talking to you today because that, that's one of my goals is to, um, you know, clear up some of the misconceptions about uh, the field of solar electricity. And the first one is that going solar is very possible in Georgetown. We have five systems operating. What is not possible in Georgetown and is not possible in, in most municipalities uh, municipal, uh, uh, you know, uh, light departments. Light yeah. departments, right? Is is leasing a solar system? So um, the communities that are in red on on that map are all the municipalities, and those are little towns like you know we have Groveland and Georgetown, Ipswich and Rowley, and the, the probably ten percent of Massachusetts um, are little towns that. Um, have their own municipal light plants. And basically what happens there is that they sort of govern and make rules, mm -hmm. you know, separate from those, the, from the big companies like National Grid, which is all the beige areas on the map, and um, NSTA, which, is, uh, which are the green areas on the map. Mm -hmm. um, in some areas, you can have solar power. Mm -hmm. And if you have extra power, mm -hmm. you can sell it back to the Solar com to the electric company. Right. You can't do that in in a municipality. No, you? you you well you can. Oh, okay. It's just a different. They have different rules. So okay. what happens? Um, well, first uh, in in most of the municipalities, you you cannot uh, have a third party ownership. So you cannot sign a a lease, solar lease. Okay. You but you certainly can be a solar owner, so that you can you can make this investment to go solar. Um, but there's no zoning restrictions or anything like that? There are no zoning restrictions. Um, I'm actually on a historical street in Pond Street, and I was, I was mindful of the fact that it has a historical feel to it. And so uh, when I was putting on my uh, solar system, you know, I consulted with my, some of my neighbors about their feelings about it. But there are, there are absolutely no restrictions to go solar. Mm -hmm. um, there are also some um, misconceptions about solar panels causing glare, and um, only certain panels do. You know, sun power, the premier panels do not cause any glare, and also the, uh, the angle, you know. That, that there are a lot of things um, that we think of when we're designing a system, making sure it doesn't cause Once you things. design a system, how long will it last in a home, mm -hmm. in a homeowner's area? So um, systems that... Um, the, that are designed today um, come with a 25-year production warranty. That's a long time. I can't think of anything else that I can buy today that has a 25-year warranty. And um, another nice thing about this whole solar technology and its development that it was, it was mostly done by Americans. This is an American industry. Um, you know, Sun Power in California, they have been on the cutting edge of development. They have the number, the most powerful panel uh, patented. They, um, you know, even though they, they do um, have parts, components um, made in other countries, it's still an American company. So when you, when you buy Sun Power, you are buying American. And then you're creating uh, American power, you know, as local as it gets. Now. Once somebody purchases a system, mm -hmm. are there monthly fees from the company that they purchased from, or how does all that work? When you purchase a solar system, like, like you're able to do in Georgetown, um, there, there, there are no fees because it's like going out and buying a car. So you buy a car, you know, perhaps you get a car loan to pay that upfront cost of that car, but there are no fees associated with it. You basically own this appliance. For 25 years minimum. F and, and it's Working. warranted to right. work for 25 years, and we expect it to outlast that warranty, as you would, yeah. Now, you, earlier you started to talk about the federal tax credit, mm -hmm. and that's off the income tax. Exactly. Okay. Now, what's an SREC program? So the SREC, SREC uh, stands for Solar Renewable uh, energy certificate, and it's a program in Massachusetts that was um, started with our uh, Clean Energy Center, and Governor Patrick has signed in this legislature, raising the standards, you know, um, of of uh, you know adding a solar component to the portfolio 
uh, of how energy is created in Massachusetts. Um, we are very progressive in, in Massachusetts when it comes to solar. Um, we are right behind Washington, D.C. as far as um, what, we, what the ESRIC program does for the homeowner, how much it supports them financially. And I, I also have a little graph showing that there's only uh, seven states all told in, in, in the United States that have any kind of a SREC program, and ours is the second strongest. So this is another tax deduction of some form. It, 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 what it is, it's an environmental um, incentive, basically. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, what is net metering? So you, you touched on net metering earlier and how. The, they're in Massachusetts, um, separate from the SREC program and separate from the federal tax program, and there's actually even a Massachusetts income tax credit program, um, there is another program called net metering. And what net metering does um, uh, is the, the basic concept of what net metering is and how it should work is basically the sun is up, you know, during the day, but it's it's basically your system goes to sleep with the sun. So there's a good amount of hours when uh, you cannot depend on your solar system unless it's being stored in a the energy is being stored okay. in a battery. So instead of storing uh, energy in, in a battery, and by the way, that, uh, that technology is coming along, but it's not quite there yet. So what we have instead of a battery is a net metering system. Net metering system, it's, it means that you're interconnected. You stay connected to the grid. So you stay a uh, customer of the utility. Okay. But what happens is that whenever, um, whenever there's a bright sunny day and, and you have all your appliances on and, and your air conditioning's going and everything's satisfied, but there's still more energy to go somewhere, then, then the wire that connects you to the street is able to actually send energy out to the street as well. So the wire can wa work both ways. Um, what can't work uh, both ways is your current meter. So the current um, electric meter on your house right. can only keep track of energy coming in. So what they do is they actually give you a different meter. It pretty much looks the same, but it's, it can measure three things. It can measure the current coming into your house, mm -hmm. the current going out to your house, mm -hmm. and then the net effect. So that, that kind of gives you a, an idea of what net metering is about. When we design a system, we, we look at an, an annual um, consumption of electricity. And then w knowing if, say, say you consume um, 7,000 kilowatt hours in one year. So then we'll design a system that will also create 7,000 kilowatt systems in one year. And through net metering, basically there's a give and take idea uh, where um, in most communities that are not municipalities, in, in national grid territory. And, and this and is the one we can't do in Georgetown. Well, we, we do something, but it's slightly different. Okay. You know, um, it's slightly different. So instead of, it's the way uh, Georgetown values the power that you are sending to the, to, to the grid. That's the only difference. Um, you still have a net meter on your house. You're still sending your energy um, that supplies your neighborhood, basically. It's still localized. Um, Nothing's wasted. But what happens is that when, when Georgetown is receiving your power, they look at it as a wholesale priced yeah. power. So okay. it's at a lesser, they reimburse you at a smaller, uh, maybe at a third uh, of the value of, of retail, um, which, is, which is, you know, better something. Nothing. It's yeah. better than nothing. Um, uh, you know, but uh, it's it's good to know that our neighbors in uh, Newberry, West Newberry, Boxford, Topsfield, Haverhill, because they're with National Grid, they are their uh, their power when it goes to the grid is valued at a retail level. They're actually the the idea behind net metering is simplicity. You know, you have uh, let's say you have a thousand kilowatt hours in one month coming into your house, and you're sending out 800 kilowatt hours. So basically, the customer gets charged for 200 kilowatt hours. Boom, you're done. The accounting's over. It's it's simple. It's 
when, and you touched on this a minute ago, and I just want to clarify it for myself and for other people that don't know that much about solar. When you have that bright sunny day, mm -hmm. and you've got the air conditioning on, and you're washing your dishes, and all the things are going on, does the meter outside your house actually stop? I mean, you can sit there and watch the meters, and they go, woo, 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 mm -hmm. and it, does it actually stop? Sometimes it stops and sometimes it goes the opposite direction. It can spin backwards. And basically that's where That's it's the giving out part. Okay. Exactly. All so right. these meters are, are pretty smart. They can measure three numbers, all the power going out, all the power coming in, and also the net effect. So sometimes you have arrows going left and sometimes you have arrows going out depending on how bright it is outside. Can this be used for businesses as well? Yes. What's great about these uh, solar incentives is that they benefit homeowners the same as they benefit businesses. So as long as a business can show profitability and they have a, a federal tax um, liability, they, they will enjoy the 30% tax credit against their liability. So it takes a profitable business to be able to... Um, to install uh, a solar system and make it a viable choice. And as far as the ESREC program, which is even greater than the 30% federal tax credit, because oh. in, in my case it actually um, covered close to 50% of the cost. Oh, that's, wow. on, that's on top of the 30% federal tax credit. And I have this ni nice little chart that, I, that we're going to show you um, uh, that shows you know, the, the incentives, how you know, a little pie chart that shows you how much of, of each incentive has covered the cost of the, of the solar system. And so these SRECs are available to homeowners, um, to individuals, uh, business. as much as business Good. owners. Now, how do you decide if a building is right for solar? Mm. Not every building is going to, not every home or business is going to be right for solar. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to save any money doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you decide? Well, first, um, you know, um, it helps to have a sunny roof. That's actually what inspired me first to look into solar electricity. I was standing um, at my window, and it, it was cold outside. It was maybe 20 degrees outside, but it was a bright winter um, New England day, and I felt hot standing by my window. The, it, the, the, it was very hot. There was a lot of heat coming in. And I just noticed this about my home that, gee, you know, there's a lot of sun. And I wonder if, you know, if, if passive solar works, then most likely um, solar electric will work as well. Um, if you, when I go out to, to see a home and to meet a customer, um, I do some measurements. I, you know, I take a compass and I look for southern orientation. And um, even if a house has an east-west orientation, it still works. It still works. We just put panels on both sides of, of the roof. But the southern orientation, basically what it means is if a house, if, um, if this is a roof and then you have the, and then you have the uh, uh, you know, early morning sun rising and uh, going across the sky all day long setting, the, those panels are able to work all day long. So you need some Preferably a house that doesn't have a lot of trees around it mm -hmm. because you want the roof to have sun all day. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be a certain pitch? It helps to be around um, 35 to 40 degree um, tilt to the pitch, like you say. But um, mine, you know, no house is perfect. I have a 22 degrees, but it still works. Um, so there is no such thing as a perfect house unless people went ahead and, and actually um, built a solar ready house and I have a picture of a photograph where um, a homeowner one of my clients he was building a garage and he had solar in mind so he built just the right roof with just the right orientation he you know he actually oriented the garage to to be 180 to the degrees instead of, right instead of the solar to fit the house exactly and so you can see a photo of that I've gone places and seen um, systems on the ground mm-hmm I haven't seen it in Georgetown, mm -hmm. but there are areas, and I don't even remember where I was, and the, almost like a whole field mm -hmm. of solar panels on sure. the ground. What's, what's different about that, or how does that work? Well, um, when there is a big, big field, like we have in the Groveland, um, there is a big solar field um, on the ground. That usually means it's, it's instead of building a power, smelly power plant, you, you have a, a, 
you know, wonderful uh, renew renewable source generator, which is the sun. The sun is creating electricity, and it's it's a more of a commercial thing. It has nothing to do really with net metering or homeowners. This is just an investment that somebody there's somebody a, there's made. There's a solar field in Groveland. Yes, and really? it actually powers over 500 homes. Wow. And yeah, it's it's right on um, Salem Street. Is it Salem Street? I believe. Yeah. I'm gonna have to yeah. take a ride. Maybe that's where yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Take a ride and, and find it. Um, what what benefits the homeowner in Georgetown other than the taxes? What other benefits are there for going solar? Well. Um, a lot of people don't realize um, that the solar panels on their roof are actually protecting their roof from ultraviolet, ultraviolet rays, which uh, deteriorate their shingles. So uh, going solar will actually extend the life of your roof, and it also has a cooling effect because when you put um, panels on your roof, they cast a shadow over your building. So whenever you have the sense, uh, I, I spoke to one, one of my uh, customers and they said, gee, sometimes this wall, this whole wall feels like it's just going to combust in front of me. That's how hot it gets in the summertime. And you know, you can minimize, you can offset mm -hmm. some of that just by the physical nature of these panels. So um, the panels can be, uh, they can also help in, um, for homeowners who experience, who experience ice damming. Because okay. the the slickness and the the dark um, feature of the panels and the fact that when they are working they're actually heat up a little bit like, just like any electronic does um, does help with clearing ice and and snow and may help with um, ice damming problems. I hate to ask the question for let's say a two thousand square foot home. What type of cost are we talking? Well, uh, you know, it depends. It depends. Like, like um, some people are very frugal with their electricity, and some people use a lot. You know, okay. it, it all varies. So, we mostly size the system based on how much of a bill are you trying to offset. Mm -hmm. So, with true net metering, um, what happens? Say that somebody's spending eighty dollars a month on an electric bill, and that was actually my case. So, it's very easy to talk about um, a specific case and. I spent twenty-four thousand dollars on my okay. system, and it sounds like a lot. It sounds like I went out and bought a car, and and it did feel like that a little bit until um, April rolled around, and I went to my accountant's office, and just from the federal tax credit, I got back seven thousand dollars. See, thirty percent of that, you get back. And that's the, the, the year you install it. Or the very year. next year. The Just very next year. The very next year. Okay. You bring uh, an invoice to your accountant. And um, by the way, that federal tax credit is also good for any improvements that you need it to do to go solar. So if there's a big old tree that you've been meaning to cut down, and you know it just happens to be casting a shadow on the roof where you go solar, you cut it down and you bring down the, the invoice from your landscaper, and, and they pay that, they deduct that too? And they deduct the 30% of that bill too. Wow. And then if you really needed to reshingle that, that, that portion of the roof anyway, if you've been meaning to do that, and so you do that with the solar project in the same year, and you bring all three invoices into your accountant, and he's going <laughs> to be able to add them together and then give you 30% out of all of them. It's great. It's, it sounds it's, too good to be true. <laughs> it does. It does. And if you think this is a good, wait till you hear about the SREC program because it's even bigger than that. Now, we're building a new school in Georgetown. Yes, we are. Is Penbrook planning on having any solar energy? Yes, I am so glad they will. They will be putting panels on their roof. I. I've been uh, after trying to get some, uh, you know, some drawings to see exactly how many panels. It's just very exciting. I know they will also have a green roof that you can actually look out and you know see the panels. And um, one of the suggestions of um, of another customer in Georgetown that I was speaking with, um, you know, he really thinks that it should be an educational. Um, as it, it should have an educational aspect. It shouldn't just be some panels that you look at, but there should be a, a monitor displaying the production. 
So they because, can use it for science department. Yes, because you know, with with, with every um, with every system now comes a monitoring s monitoring uh, so that you can see if there if there's anything wrong with your panels. How how else would you know, right? So the monitoring basically hour by hour. Uh, day by day, you know, year by year, you can see graphs of your production, and that's how you would quickly know uh, if you're in, if there's anything wrong going going wrong with your investment. Wow, mm. learned a lot today. <laughs> well, I I really can't. I encourage people enough to think about the solar. Um, electric systems as an investment you know um, I think it's the right thing for young families you know uh, we we all are looking for you know how do we invest how do we save for a time and how do we save for our college uh, education of our children and I really uh, invite people to look at an, a solar electric system as part of their investment portfolio. It not only w yields a healthy annual return on investment, but you are actually protecting the environment to, s to, to leave. It's to definitely going children. green. Yes. It's, it's going definitely green. going green. Yes. Well, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you. It's been nice having you here. Thank, thank you. you very, thank very you. much. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, We'll talk to you again, Andrea. I think we will. I hope so. <laughs> I'm Beverly Enos. This is Spotlight Georgetown, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now. <laughs>